All right. Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Good morning for those of morning. Uh, as you see, I'm still working as usual. I never stop working. And I enjoy what I do. I really enjoy it very much. Every day is a blessed day. For always, you don't work for yourself, but you work for the benefit of people. Our topic is about Israel. Uh, I made a video, uh, I think it was two days ago, and I told you I will take it off because, you know, I don't really to speak much about politics. But sometimes I cannot really hold myself from exposing certain people who work in politics. We know that politics is dirty. And nothing changed it was the same through centuries and centuries i mean power is always a reason of corruption kings they kill each other they cheat they lie uh, they destroy their nations they sell you out they buy you you know everything is for sale for those people now i spoke two days ago first of all i know like not many people are online i understand that and really i don't care I share my opinion, and people who like to watch it, they can watch it. Uh, for me, what is important is uh, to say what is right and to say what is true. How many people accept, how many people believe, how many people watch, that's not really important much. For sure, the more we see uh, viewers, the better, because we can share the ideas. And by the way, you can post your comment. You don't have to agree with me. Absolutely not. Uh, I am an Arab, yes, but I am not a dictator. Uh, a few days ago, uh, the fight started between Hamas and Israel. And this has always happened. Every few weeks, Hamas starts chilling Israel. Israel seek uh, members of Hamas, try to chase them, and try to hunt them down. And Hamas is a, as an organization is uh, considered by all standards a terrorist organization. Even Saudi Arabia, even Saudi Arabia, Hamas is a, is a part of the Muslim Brotherhood. And you see, uh, Muslim Brotherhood, they have many branches, and um, Hamas is just a branch of the Muslim Brotherhood, which is located in Gaza and in the uh, West Bank. But the major of them is located in Gaza. And they are the armed uh, branch of the Muslim Brotherhood in that territory. Emirat, um, Saudi Arabia, many, many uh, Islamic countries even, they consider them to be terrorist organization. Now, when you have a terrorist organization, and this terrorist organization, they are the same as ISIS, the same as Al-Qaeda, and you know they will never leave you alone. There is many reasons Hamas cannot stop fighting Israel. You see, most of people, they think it's just about, okay, they are Muslims, they believe in Allah, they believe they have to take back the uh, Jerusalem, etc. They knew they will never take Jerusalem. And this is not even a question. The Saudi, the Emirati, the Bahrain, all the Muslims in the world, they knew that Jerusalem is far dream. It's impossible. So what this fight is about? Number one thing you need to put in your head that it is a big business. It's a huge business. You see, when we look at war, many of us, we see that people are fighting over power, right? But we don't see and don't we don't notice that war is a big market. It's a big industry. It's a huge one. Uh, Hamas are receiving a lot of money as donation for one reason. Just because they claim they are fighting Israel. If that fight stop, the money will stop. As simple as that. And life in the Middle East is very cheap. Life in the Middle East have no value. Those people, they have no, they have nothing. They have no jobs. They have no industry. All what they have is women make babies, 
and they used to to live by the welfare of the United Nation, which is the money of America and the money of Europe. So, war is a reason, major reason to survive. Without the war, they cannot survive. And especially those who they are doing the business of war, they will make not only surviving, they will become so extremely so rich. As an example, Haniya, one of the leaders of Hamas, he have many buildings in Gaza, and he have many wives. Each one of them, she live in her own big, huge building. For sure, he can afford it because he is getting a small salary from Hamas. All of them like that. All of them, they are extremely rich, extremely wealthy. Not the same as the rest of the population, for sure. We are talking about the leaders. So in order to convince the leaders to give up war, it's like convincing them to close the business. This is one of the reasons. Now, by the way, I'm right now I am in the Israeli defense website. All right. This is OMOD government. All right. And the one we see in the screen in front of us, uh, his name is Lieberman, as I know. And he resigned today from the Israeli government. Why he resigned? Why this guy? He resigned from the government of Netanyahu. Lieberman is the minister of defense in Israel. And he cannot take, or he cannot take it anymore to work with the corrupt man. His name is Netanyahu. It is really horrible when we have two sides, they are businessmen doing business of war. To keep the war going you see each time the Israeli almost closed to finish the war somebody stopped them and the one who stopped them is not from abroad it is from inside if you remember the war before with Gaza a few years ago and I made a video about it at that time the name of the video is kind of funny but I made it for a purpose at that time, everybody was attacking Israel and everybody was insulting the Jews and everybody was saying they are bad, they are ugly, they are disgusting. So I made a video, it's called uh, The Beauty of Hamas and the Ugliness of Israel. For sure, the video is showing the opposite. And I was using the documentary made by the Palestinians themselves. Each time there's a war and the war started and go really aggressive, some corrupt inside the Israeli government, they stop the war. And the reason is very simple. If we make it one war for good, then where the money will come from? If you go around now and check, where is Hamas is getting their weapon from? You will not believe it if I tell you that they are buying it from the Israeli. For sure, we don't mean the Israeli, who they are, me and you. I mean, like people like me and you. We are talking about real businessmen, uh, but they don't care really for the country. They care about making money. All what they care for is making money. And I believe strongly Netanyahu is a very much corrupt man. I mean, he is. The, I he, uh, people will you know count my words. This guy he will end in jail. He is corrupt the same as Muhammad, the prophet of Islam. This man, Lieberman, he want to finish the war. We cannot let those people shell us and bomb us from every few weeks. And then we attack them, and then we seek peace, and then we, uh, you know, we, we see it fire, and then it, they, they go back again and they attack us again. I mean, this is when this is going to end. So this man, I don't know him really, I don't know much about him, but look like, sound like he is a good man. Who's trying to protect his people as much as he can, and Netanyahu is preventing Israel from destroying the enemy. You see, if you go and read the history of Netanyahu, you will see that Netanyahu he was screaming, speaking in the United Nations against Iran. Uh, Iran is a threat. Iran will destroy Israel. Iran, Iran, and but Netanyahu never attack Iran 
Why you are crying? You can destroy all the facility of the nuclear weapon in Iran in five minutes. So why you did not do it? Why Netanyahu waited until Obama signed an agreement with the Iranian government and gave them hundreds and billions of millions of dollars? And they stop all the sanctions, which mean now Israel have no right to attack Iran. Even the European, they joined that agreement. Why this stupid guy, he did not go and finish the deal with Iran, as long as you know Iran is a big threat. Why you make or you let the beast grow? You will be surprised that money is involved. As an example, during the war between Iraq and Iran, you can go right now and search on the internet and you will find that businessmen from Israel, they were selling weapons to Iran. It's exactly what's happening now in Gaza. Those same businessmen, and I believe Netanyahu is involved in this corruption, they are selling weapon to Hamas. How we want to fight them, but we sell them weapon. The corrupt Netanyahu, during the war in Syria, he opened hospitals for Al-Qaeda, and he opened hospitals for the terrorists of Hamas, who they are Syrian Hamas. To make it simple for you, Netanyahu tried to convince us that he fight Hamas in Gaza, but he support Hamas in Syria. I'm not sure if you are getting the idea of how corrupt this man is. Are we, are you guys getting the idea? How we are fighting Iran, but we sell weapon to Iran. <laughs> Somebody ex explain to me. You know, this kind of corruption is always exist. They have two faces. How we are against terrorists, and then we sponsor terrorists in Syria. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, I remember. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Ah, okay. So now the terrorists in Syria, they are fighting Iran and Hezbollah, so we sponsor the terrorists. But the terrorists, both of them are terrorists, yeah. But you are not doing good by supporting terrorists. At the end of the day, both of them, they want to kill you. Just leave them alone and let them fight each other. There is something very important for people to do is to be decent and to be truthful and to take the side of the right thing to do. You cannot be against Hamas in Gaza and supporting Hamas in Syria. That is very stupid of you. And look what happened now. Israel supported Hamas in Syria and allowed the Czech Republic to smuggle a lot of missiles which run you know uh, i don't know what they call it in english it's like the kind can track a truck even if the truck tried to run away it have like a, a, a magnetic heat system where it can uh, like scan the machine where is the machine and wherever the machine goes because there is an engine which is hot is running the missile will follow it and will hit it even if you try to run away so they asked the Czech republic to sell this weapons to Hamas in Syria, to the Muslim Brotherhood in Syria, to Muslim Brotherhood in Libya. And Hillary Clinton, the scam, she was part of that deal too. You see, Hillary Clinton, when she she went, she she met uh, she met one person only from Libya after Al Qazafi was killed. Who is that person? Was the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood in Libya? I mean, from all Libya, we could not find somebody to meet. To plan about the future of tomorrow, except the Muslim Brotherhood, because they were preparing the Muslim Brotherhood to take over Libya. This is the plan of Obama, to establish an empire of the Muslim Brotherhood. Goes all the way from Turkey, all the way to Libya, and all the way to Morocco. And almost actually they were successful, except they got a guy, he is so smart, he is smarter than a fox, his name is Putin. He destroyed all their stupid plans. So they provide them with those weapons. And last week, they used this weapon for the first time against the Israeli army. Do you see how evil can come back to you? Guys, do you notice what I'm saying? Do you see how evil come back to Israel? Netanyahu, the corrupt man, he provide Hamas in Syria with those weapons. And now those weapons are used against the Israeli army inside Syria 
inside Israel, killing Israeli soldiers. Lieberman, he cannot take it no more. This man we show on the screen. So he resigned today. And I hope that this Netanyahu, he will go where he belongs. It is time for the Israeli to vote for a new leader, not a corrupt man. I remind the Israeli, if there is any of them is going to listen to this video. Hezbollah was shilling you, attacking you for more than 20 years. And because always you have a potato leader, I like, you know, don't think I'm insulting. I use the word potato a lot. I use, but I like potato. I call them potato fuel for they are not real leaders. 20 years, Hezbollah, attacking you, even kidnapping soldiers, even kidnapping civilian, even kidnapping priest, even kidnapping normal people from the street. And you did nothing about it. Instead, you made them look like heroes. When one day the Israeli decide to go into action with Hezbollah and they hit him, hit him so hard, extremely hard. Since then, Hezbollah did not even dare to fart toward Israel. Nasrullah right now, he don't even dare to drive his car in the top of the road. He don't dare to shoot a bullet at Israel. If you go and see how many times Israel hit Hezbollah in the last just five years, hundreds of times, and yet Hezbollah don't dare because they learned their lesson. Israel this time is not going to play games with them. They got the message. What Israel need to do is to do the same they did with Hezbollah, with Hamas. One war, one war, otherwise you will never have peace. You see, I am against war. Because war is ugly and bloodshed, people die. But you have a terrorist organization, how you can get rid of it? You know, I mean, if there's a solution, like if there is a way, maybe we give them cake and they will leave. Maybe we give them a, a, a subscription to Netflix, they will watch movies and they'll stop attacking us. How we can stop a satanic terrorist organization? The only way is to demolish it. One time deal. One time deal. There's no other way. The Israeli, they need to know that. There is no other solution. You will never reach peace with them. And whoever believed that there's a, there will be a peace between Israel and the Muslims, he is a stupid. You see, the Israel now, Israeli now, they signed a peace agreement many years ago with, with Egypt, right? Okay. Do you really believe that this is a peace agreement? Those those Muslims, they are waiting for the day they are stronger than you so they can demolish you. It's temporarily. The Quran says that and they will follow the Quran. The Quran says, cry not for peace when you are the uppermost. Cry not for peace. As long you are what? As long you are the uppermost. So what the Quran is saying to the Muslims? You can sign a peace agreement with the with the with the uh, uh, with the Israeli, but that have to be temporarily. Let me show you the verse on the screen so you can understand. I'm not making things up. You know me; I never say something unless it is true. Let's switch to Arabic. I hope my uh, my wireless mouse will not die before we finish today because it's almost dead. Uh, <clears throat> read carefully with me. Chapter of Muhammad. The name of the chapter, even the chapter name is Muhammad. You know. Chapter 47, verse number 35. Read carefully, please. This is not my translation. I'm not the one is saying that. It is the Quran. And you tell me if the Quran is something extremely important for the Abdul around the world or a peace of agreement. It's called peace agreement. Be not weary and faint, faint hearted, crying for peace when you should be the uppermost. Is the message clear? A Muslim is forbidden 
to cry for peace if he is in the situation or the position of being the uppermost so why he is why the Egyptian Muslim Egyptian they sign an agreement with Israel it's called peace agreement because simply they are waiting until they are the uppermost are we following Please share the video with your friends so we can get more people to listen and to learn. This fight is not about the land and will never be about the land. This fight about that those are Jews and we are Muslims. The Ottoman, they occupy most of the Middle East for more than 400 years. Nobody complained. The Albanian, they rule Egypt for more than a thousand years and nobody complained. A thousand year you believe it they don't have an Egyptian leader a thousand year ruled by people from Albania and nobody complained just because they are Muslims so the problem with Israel is not about the land Muhammad he said that time will come and the Jew they will try to run to, to they will try to run to their life and then the Jew will hide behind a tree or a rock and the tree and the rock will say there is a Jew behind me come and kill him and by the way the Muslim they teach that in their schools in their university in their mosque don't think this is like history they believe in that and they believe that they should this is will happen and should happen which means this is going to be until judgment day it's your destiny Muhammad he hated them very much for the Jews they exposed him and if there is somebody when I say I don't believe Muhammad he said that my friend I can show you Let's see if we can find the hadith in English. Here we go. Am I making things up? Or this is how it is? Read carefully with me, please. Abu Huraira reported Allah Messenger. I mean, the funny, the Muslim, they say, may peace on him. Do you see how much peaceful he is? I mean, this guy, he is too much into peace to the point even trees will help in slaughtering the Jews. Rocks will help to slaughter the Jews. He said, the last hour would not come unless the Muslims fight against the Jews and the Muslim would kill them until the Jews would hide themselves behind the stone, which means here we have a genocide, like, you know, that's it. We will finish them all. Would hide themselves behind a stone or a tree. And a stone or a tree would say, the tree will speak, the stone will speak, say, O oh Muslims, O oh servant of Allah, there is a Jew behind me. Come and kill him. And Muhammad he claimed there's only one kind of trees, they are evil. Muhammad he don't like them. This tree will hide the Jews. <laughs> now, I am showing you this why? Because there's many naive, stupid Israelis, sadly to say, they believe that you can reach an agreement with their neighbors. You must be an official donkey to believe in that. You know, when I was in school in the Middle East, and as you know, I am an Arab from the Middle East. When we go to a classroom to learn about history, etc., the Jews are people who have tail. Actually, the first time I saw a Jew, I was looking at his ass. I mean, where is the tail? Because they made they made us believe that Jews are like like the devil. A Jew is a satanic person. He's not a human. He's a pig. He's a monkey. And they do anything in their hand, anything in their pocket, anything in the imagination to make you hate them. I remember once a Muslim he said to me, How come always you defend the Jews? 
I said, why I will I'm not defending the Jews. I'm defending the what is right He said well, isn't it them who killed your Jesus your God? I said I thought they did not kill him as the Quran said Isn't it the Quran say that they did not kill him? He said, yeah, the Quran say that but according to you they killed him. I said oh, so why why now suddenly you believe in what I believe that he Jesus was killed but now just because you want me to hate the Jews suddenly you sacrifice your belief and you make me believe in my belief suddenly now you are trying to convince me that I should hate the Jews just because they killed Jesus but in your religion Jesus was not killed by the Jews and never was killed so they do everything they can to make everybody hate them not only the Arab Muslims even the Arab Christians Based on what we said, do you think really ever you will have a peace agreement? Look at the stupid uh, 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 Israeli government, one after one. They gave south of Lebanon to Hezbollah. Okay, is Hezbollah became peaceful after you gave them south of Lebanon? No, they start attacking inside Israel. They gave the West Bank to Arafat. Was Arafat who became a person who is love peace? No, it's still the same. They gave Gaza to Hamas. Did the people of Gaza leave you alone? No. What they want next? Next, you give them Jerusalem. Do you think they will leave you alone? Actually, if if uh, if Israel ever gave Jerusalem up, Israel is gone. It's history. That's it. You see, Israel is very small. Israel is a very tiny country. And it's very important for a country to exist is to have a distance between you and your enemies and this is the problem now that Israeli have the enemy is so close to the point they can dig under the ground and they can come to you from your home so the more you give up land the land for the Israeli is a priceless it's not just about the land it's about security the more you give up a land the more you are insecure the more you are destroying your country Israeli they are not aware of what's going on and I say that to you because I can I can show you right now in YouTube how many Israeli they believe that Israel is not being unjust to the Palestinians by the way those they call them Palestinian none of them is a Palestinian none of them is Palestinian the first time Arabic language is spoke in this territory it was in the time of Abdul Malik of number one. Go and see what year is that. <laughs> Before that, there's no Arab and nobody speak Arabic there. The language there is spoken is Aramaic or Hebrew, which means if the Christian they speak Aramaic, the Jews they speak Hebrew. They are themselves occupation. The same as Erdogan, he gave us a speech about occupation, but he himself, his country is not exist in the map. This is Constantinia. It was occupied from the Christians, and he is there. He have no right to be. But yet he is a school in Israel about occupation. There's nothing called Jordanian, my friend. <clears throat> Jordan is not a country. There was never before a country is called Jord Jordan. Jordan is the creation. You see, all the maps you see in the map, in the Middle East today is the creation of the French and the British. Even the map of Israel, which is not right, Israel deserved to be a lot bigger than what they have right now. It was the decision of the British and the French. They are the one who made Jordan big, and they are the one who made Israel small. They are the one who made Syria today, and they are the one who made Iraq today. But at that time, the Jews are very small, you know. Uh, they are they didn't have an army uh, I don't know how many of you knows about what happened the first time the Arab Muslims attack Israel anyone remember who remember do you know at that time Israel have have how many airplane anyone knows zero a huge army volunteer from every country in the Middle East coming to fight and kill all the Jews volunteer 
they take them from the square yard in the city downtown who want to go and do jihad Allahu Akbar and people they volunteer thousands and thousands came from everywhere and the Jews they were minority small tiny minority and actually until now they're still they came from everywhere but the mercy of God was able to destroy their plan otherwise they are able easy to destroy Israel at that time maybe many of you do not know what happened there is a bunch of uh, airplane pilot they decide to go and join Israel in their war so they carry their own private airplane private airplane is not even like it's not legally like a government airplane it's like you know old old you know so they fly all the way to the Middle East imagine how far the journey I think it was a three or four airplanes the day the Muslims attack Israel those airplanes I think I think one of them destroyed in the way and the other one destroyed in the first in the first day it's like technical you know it's like it's a it's an old airplanes I mean there was only two two airplane left the Arab they thought that Israel have a lot of them so they decide to withdraw two airplane change the destiny of the war of the war do you believe it two airplane if the Arab continue the invasion they will be able to destroy Israel but they saw that two airplanes they can kill a lot and they can do a lot so they decide to run away not knowing that it is only two airplanes see uh well you know they are they are evil Iranian government at Hezbollah they are evil and they should be destroyed but the problem is my friend you see even when Israel attacked is uh, Hezbollah many years ago and they did really harm them badly inside Israel they, they've been forced to stop the war they should not they should not until they finish Hezbollah one time for good don't start a fight if you don't want to finish it don't sacrifice soldiers if you are not going I mean you see what the problem in Israel Israel is a democratic country and this is the one of the weakness of democ democracy in democracy a leader is a as a politician you guys you know what I'm saying in democracy a leader is a politician which means he is worried about election he is not a dictator a dictator he, he don't care he's nobody is going to go in election against him so he's not worried about next election in Israel because of that that is a big weakness actually me myself I wish truly I wish that Israel is going to have a dictator because this is the only way that Israeli can have victory someone he decide he do what he need to do and he don't care about what the rest will say he will not think about himself the second you are a dictator maybe it's bad maybe it's ugly maybe etc you can say whatever you want but in this situation you need a dictator one of the points in Russia Putin is so strong that Russia is a kind of a democracy but it run at the same time by the dictator which making him an absolute power and making him so powerful and now look at Russia who dare to play with Russia nobody if Russia have a democracy the same as you are saying Russia today will not be the same as it is today Russia is extremely strong powerful because they have one guy control everything look at America the president even he don't even he don't have the authority even to close the border he cannot do anything two parties fighting over power one want to go right one want to go left and then we end going nowhere you know what I mean is is my idea clear you see Hitler let me tell you about Hitler Hitler now you are making fun of him but if Hitler was a winner all of you will be worshiping him now you see always always in history people worship the winner and they throw rocks at the loser if Hitler was the winner in that war do you think anyone dare to say Nazis are bad 
Do you think anyone dare to say Hitler was bad? Nobody. Always the loser, they put him down. Hitler, he made Germany a very powerful country. Extremely. He made the mistakes and he lost the war. Especially when he attacked, attacked the Russian. Very stupid mistake. But always you, you know, always you don't understand the reality. That reality is even the evil one, if he won, he will be praised. The same as what happened to Muhammad. Who is more evil, Hitler or Muhammad? Who killed more Jews, Hitler or Muhammad? But look, nobody now is saying Muhammad is a bad person. They are praising him. European countries are opening mosques. They are bringing Muslims, allowing Islam to be spread. They have no problem with the ideology of Islam, which is teaching hate. Look what we have in front of us on the screen. If you go to Europe, if you say that somebody here like Hitler, he, they will arrest him. Okay, how come you don't arrest somebody believing Muhammad? Guys, do you understand what I'm saying? How come Hitler is bad, but Muhammad is not bad? Isn't it the same idea? Hitler want to kill all the Jews. Muhammad want to kill all the Jews. Why Muhammad is not banned from Europe? Are we listening, people? Why Hitler is bad and Muhammad is not bad? Both of them did the same. Actually, if you go, if you go in the Middle East, every Arab Muslim he worship Hitler. And the reason what? He killed the Jews. None of them hate Hitler. So how how you allowed a satanic teaching like this teaching in front of us on the screen? Is that satanic or not? The answer is that they don't have the courage to say Muhammad is an evil man. They're potatoes. Once the Pope, he said Muhammad, he brought nothing but evil, the Muslims just start burning churches in the Middle East. All right? So because they are afraid of their evil, they don't dare to say the evil is evil. This is the teaching of Muhammad. You see, I'm not against Muslims as a human being like me. I'm against evil. Why a Muslim want to kill all the Jews? Why? A Jew is a human being like you. Why you want to kill the Christians? Why you want to kill the atheists? Why you want to kill the Hindus? Why you want to kill the Buddhas? I mean, name one one religion or none believers. Muslims don't have a problem with them. They want to they want to fight everybody. Why? Because Muhammad. He said, I've been ordered to fight all mankind and tell nobody but Muslims. This is not a brainwash, my friend. You see, we keep saying the word a brainwash, but you don't understand that this is about the benefit. The idea of Islam is we will go and kill the Jews and give them their, your money. There's a video made by a cleric from Egypt. He said, do you know why Egypt now today is poor? Do you have an idea? I wish I can play the video for you, but you can search it. He said, the reason we are poor, because we are not doing jihad no more. Imagine now if we attack Israel, or we attack Europe, and we enslave all the blonde girls, and we take all their money, how rich we will be. It's not about brainwashed, it's a business. They have a religion allowing them to attack the neighbor, take his wife, take his money, take his daughters, take his land, take his fruits, take his goods, take his jewelries, and he will not feel guilty. It's a very comfortable gang belief. This is not about brainwash. They knew. Stop fooling yourself about being brainwashed. They knew. He is teaching the, his followers that we are poor for this reason. He is not talking about God now. He's talking about you want to get rich? The same as Muhammad one day he said to his followers, attack the Roman and get the blondie. Well, Egypt will, will be destroyed if they go in war now, but what if they get and they earn the nuclear weapon in 20 years from now? Hmm? 
Egypt is very huge. Very, if we compare Egypt to Israel, eh, Israel is tiny, little tiny. It's the size of a farm in Egypt. Which means it doesn't matter how big you are, still you have a big risk because all the population of Israel in a small area. Egypt is a very mass land. Same as Saudi Arabia, same as Libya, same as Egypt is a very small, is a very big country compared to Israel. And this is what is waiting for Israel. They are waiting for the time they are powerful. And now they are trying to convince the stupid American to build a nuclear facility in Saudi Arabia. Yes, the stupid Trump, he might do it. The Russian might do it. Money. Everything for sale. Iran, almost they reached the point making a nuclear weapon. Actually, I believe maybe they have it already. I don't believe they don't have it. Time will come. No, they are not strong army. You see, the problem is, it's not about strong army. It's about belief. Because they can fight you without having an army. Like, look now at Hamas. They send the women in the street. She come to, to, to you. She asks you, do you know how to go to this hospital? And you start pointing your finger at the sky to show her where to go. And then she, while you are busy trying to help her to go, she get her knife and she stab you. War have many ways. And terrorism is very active. When Muhammad said, I've been victorious by terrorism, he knew what he's talking about. Right? Well, they can lie about it if you don't expose them, and that's what we are doing. And you know, let, let me tell you guys. I want to tell you something. I hope people will not be upset. If I am a Muslim, how many viewers I will have right now? I know it's late, it's early morning, etc. So I have like only 200 people watching. Usually I have like maybe 500, 600. But if I am a Muslim, how many people they will share my videos, download them, post them around? You will not believe it. So what we do, we blame them for being who they are, but we don't do anything. We just watch. You know what I mean? Oh, Christian Prince is fighting for us, so you know. Okay, we have Sam Shamoon is debating the Muslims. Okay, Sam Shamoon. You know, if you look how many people they are exposing Islam, you can count them by fingers. If you look how many people they are fighting Christianity, we can count them by millions. And the Christian don't get the support in any way, in any mean. And I mean what I say. In order to win against the devil, you have to have a united front. Not to stand behind a, a few warriors and say they will do the job. There are few. We do what we can, but this is not our size. The war is bigger than who we are. You see, the Muslim they think that a Christian prince, he have a secretary and he have an army behind. I, I am just one man. I have nobody. I have nobody, actually, nobody even know who I am. How many videos I made today? You, you can tell how much I'm giving from my time for what I do. But I can do more. I mean, honest to God, my voice is gone. I'm really tired. My eyes hurt. And yet I feel guilty for not speaking about something I should speak about. But look, the Christians, they watch. I made videos exposing this guy who was trying to humiliate David Wood. But how many people did download it? How many people will say, go and see. I, we have 600 views. I made the video in the morning. 600 views, why? If it was a song of a girl shaking her bum, you will see how many of you will have.
nobody really care you see we cannot we cannot blame the evil to be there but yet we don't want to fight the evil you don't worry about me I'm fine it's okay you know I'm used to it guys you didn't know honest to God you can ask some people who knows knows me for many many years sometime I used to go on for 20 24 hours 24 hours I'm not exaggerating because in a certain time there was a vacuum everybody speaking about Islam as a wonderful religion there's nobody nobody even dare to speak about it at that moment I felt I have a duty and I spend a lot of time from my life to fight this cult and I was very very successful I'm not complaining by the way I'm not saying I'm not successful absolutely not I'm very successful I'm so I'm so happy of what I did because one person he was able to change a lot what I'm saying if one person can do that imagine if all of us we do together what one person can do I understand that you do not have the knowledge I have but isn't this what I do every day sharing my knowledge with you didn't I even I open an Arabic a classroom to teach you for free imagine I made it for free nobody come I made it for for money people come you believe it when I made it for free nobody came nobody attend first day they were excited it was 20 second day it was 15 the third day it was etc a week after they were they are five and then two weeks after they became two what I can do more you want to learn Arabic I said let us teach you you want to learn about Islam I'm here for you you want me to debate Muslims I'm doing it every day you want me to make videos to explain things to you I do my best I have thousands and thousands of videos what I can do more you want me to write books I did wrote books <laughs> what I can do more <laughs> you know uh, uh, no no but the point is people don't appreciate what is for free they think you see even Jesus even Jesus people they take it in, a, in a, as a cheap cheap offering because Jesus they think it's for free Jesus he paid his blood for you they say that they say to you that your salvation is for free absolutely it's not for free it was priceless the Messiah he died in the cross he was crucified how it's for free what is it free about that but people when you say to them for free they think it's have no bad look like, I mean why it's for free obviously it's nothing you know what I mean they got the idea if something is so expensive and something is for free the free is nothing I mean I'm not going to go you tell a person I get you a ticket for a place to go and the price for it is two thousand dollars he will die to go and tell him it's for free I mean obviously there's nothing there all right we have always to remember that there is garbage always in your house and in my house if we don't throw it somebody have to throw the garbage and look like it's my destiny <laughs> to clean the garbage which is okay you know I'm not complaining I wear mask every day and by the way the Muslim they say if you if you read the comments you see the Muslim they say uh, Christian Prince why you don't dare to show your face and this is one of the stupid things the Muslims they say let me ask you a question why your prophet don't dare to show us his angel his miracles you are worried about my face I'm not a prophet I am not an actor why you want to see my face you want to hear my answers not my face my friend but because you are a coward like your prophet you try to find an excuse or because you are not showing us our face so we want to debate you that is an excuse what do you want from my face I like it this way and now I can fly to Saudi Arabia and they cannot ban me they do not know who I am that's fun I can go to the heart of the Middle East and they will not stop me they don't know who I am and look someone like Robert Spencer because they knew his face what they do they sign a big a huge petition to the UK government and they ban him from entering UK do you see what happened when somebody have his face showing you are a coward you could not take what this guy is saying so you ban him right
No, no, I'm, I'm talking about the excuse. You see, Muhammad, if I talk about cowardice, your prophet himself, the first people he ran to hide between them, it was the Christian. The Christian, they gave him asylum in Ethiopia. The Jews, they gave him they gave him asylum in, 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 in Yathrib, which now became Mecca after he killed them. Even Muhammad, he never debated the Christians. When they asked him for a debate, he did not face them face to face. He said, okay, invite your wives, I invite my wives, invite your children, I invite my children, and let us invoke Allah to curse the one is lying. Curse him party. Because you don't dare to have a real debate. So, you know, we go back to our topic about Israel. I hope the Israeli, and I hope I'm not wrong, they will choose someone like this man to be a prime minister. I did respect this man when he decided to leave the government of Netanyahu because Netanyahu is not doing his job to protect Israel. It doesn't matter really who is going to be prime minister. I pray. And I hope that the Lord will answer my prayer. That the Israeli government, the one we have right now, is going to collapse. And they will have a new prime minister who is a real man, a real leader, a real person who is willing to do whatever is going to take in order to protect Israel. No, my friend, my, my Skype is not open for now. We are not talking about really Islam to debate. But tomorrow we will be online usually as usual. God is willing if my voice is, is good. And we will be around 3.30. If you want, you can call me. All right? Uh, and by the way, Muslims, they say, uh, uh, why you don't debate this guy? And why I am here every day and my Skype open every day for many hours. What do you mean you don't debate this guy? Do you think really those Abdul, they do not know how to find me? They do not know how to call me? I just showed you a video today of those two potatoes running away from debating me. After they accepted to debate me, the same exactly what Shabir Ali he did. He accepted to debate me and then he ran away. However, this is all for our benefit. Actually, it's not for my standard to debate kids. But I wanted to do it to make a challenge to show you that they will never dare. I know they will never debate me. The only one who debate me is someone is making a career mistake. And those people are not going to do such a career mistake. This is why Shabir Ali, he ran away. Uh, and we are extremely successful in what we do. If you go right now and see how many people they are taking my videos and posting them around, you will see really that things are changing. And you will see how many people are leaving Islam. You see that the gentleman who called me today, his name is Adam. What he said, he said he watched my videos for a long time, right? So if you think you are not being successful, that's wrong. Because sometimes you might be soft like a drop of water. How, how weak the drop of water is? Very weak. Extremely weak. Put a rock, put a rock. A hard rock, marble, under a faucet. And they leave the faucet dripping, drop, after drop then you will not believe it that this drop of water is going to make a hole in that rock so even if you are soft like a rock or oh sorry like a water you will be able to destroy that rock and here we go today we have a person who used to be a Muslim. He was a, he's from a Muslim family. Today he accepted Christ and he decided to leave the evil of Islam. You don't know who is going to listen to you. You do not know who is going to learn from you. Just be truthful. Show the reference. Show the proof. And they will check it out. You see, they deny he is lying, blah, 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 blah. But people, they see it in the screen. In the beginning, they fight because they will have anger. Because the second you say to them their prophet is being stupid, look what he did. He will feel like he is the stupid, as if I'm calling him him, he is a stupid. Which is true, he's a stupid too for following a stupid prophet. Today, when I, I posted for this uh, person whose name is Adam, I don't know if this is his real name or not, but 
when I posted the facts for him, I advised you to watch the video previous to this one. Actually, it was two videos before this one, but it was today. Uh, actually, no, already we passed 12 uh, a.m. in the morning, so it was yesterday. Depending on your time, I'm not sure. So when I, I showed him the facts one by one, he had no choice but to admit that Muhammad cannot be a prophet. They resist in the beginning. There is the idea they might hate you, they might curse you, but by time they will notice that this guy is telling the truth. It's time to leave, and they do leave, right? So it's very important for us not to give up and not to think that we are not doing good, but still, I want to see more good to be done. The only disappointed I see that the majority, maybe maybe you guys who come here, you support, you help, but the majority they are just watching. Oh, Christian Prince is funny. We you know we we like to listen to you. You're funny. I'm not here to be funny. I'm not a comedian. I'm not here to do to deliver to you an entertainment. What I do is extremely serious, very serious. Life of many change because of what we do. And it's very risky too. If we ask now, how many Abdul terrorists would like to kill Christian Prince? I will leave the answer for you. <laughs> you can imagine, right? But that will not change anything. I live once in this earth. And my life is eternal with my Lord. I don't care you see actually if I care really I will not even be saying one word I will go and just watch TV and like everybody let the business done by somebody else they say you don't show your face because I'm smart as simple as that I fight the devil but the devil cannot find me he shoot in the air, looking for a Christian prince. So don't feel bad because I'm smart and you are not, my friend. Anyway, feel free to download this video, share it with your friends, and let us hope. It might look weird, right? It might sound weird. I hope that the Israeli government is going to collapse. And many members of it, they are going to resign from the stupid Netanyahu government. And I hope that the Israeli, they would choose someone better than Netanyahu. Because obviously, he don't fit in any way, in any way mean to be a prime minister. They need someone who is strong, someone who is willing to protect Israel, someone who is willing to take it and walk the walk to the end. It's not someone doing a business. Stay away from people doing business. And the, sadly, all government in this world now they are doing business we are friends with saudi arabia the guy the, the saudi arabia you know they got a guy coming inside the embassy they cut him pieces i mean how we can be friends with those people <laughs> you tell me how we can even have them having an embassy in our country what if a christian prince go to the embassy of saudi arabia what they would do to me <laughs> you know what i mean uh uh what kind of friends those friends but business money you know money talk they don't care really if, even if you are a criminal even if you are a gang even if you are it doesn't matter who you are just bring your money they don't care see al Qazafi one day was the best friend for america after he gave up his weapon and to europe why money al Qazafi is, an, is a sick evil person and mad in the same time saddam hussein saddam hussein during the war with iran all the west is his friends money money my friend when kuwait was occupied by saddam hussein the whole world stand to support kuwait why money kuwait is a small tiny country how come when the tutsi and whatever they name in, in africa they were killing each other and more than six hundred thousand burned alive and killed the slaughter how come nato did not move how come america did not move clinton at that time the coward because there's no money. Those are African poor people. Hmm, let them die. But when Kuwait happened, 
everybody want to defend Kuwait. The East, the West, every country in the world suddenly is in love with Kuwait. Kuwait is in the size of a farm. The whole population of Kuwait at that time is not even 200,000. Actually, the prince of Kuwait, he paid for all his citizens to stay in hotels. You believe it, how big the country is? All of them, they stay in the hotel and the prince, he pay the hotel. This is how big the population of the country. Sometime, you know, saying the truth can hurt. But what we can do, this is how it is. Money, right? Um, uh, I don't remember if you can give me the video so we can see if it is him, so we can publish it again. If you have the video when he called me, what time? Let me know, please. Post it in the text there. Post it in the in the comments. All right. <clears throat> anyway, I don't care really. Ali Dawa, who's Ali Dawa? This guy doesn't even know how to say his prophet correctly. Not a bunch of kids. You know, I don't blame the Muslims, by the way, and the debate happened between them and David Wood. David Wood was very soft. He is not a debater. You know, write an article in computer and then read for us the article. You know, a debate needs to be somebody to be strong, firm, and he got he is willing to get them busted. You are there to get them busted, not to make a speech, not to read an article you wrote before and you go home. And that's why they fear debating me. Because I will not let any things they say go. Not a single word. When you speak to Christian Prince, you will be take accountable for what you say. Well, you know, his rude is not his fault. <laughs> you see, if I if I if, if I, Abdul is rude. Who is holding you from getting him busted anyway? Actually, because he's rude, you should be more aggressive with him. But David Wood was like so relaxed as if he's sitting in a coffee shop and he did not do anything. And that made them feel that they have victory over him. He allowed them to be rude. It's not their fault. You know what I mean? Uh... When you gain, you go to debate with with the, with people following a cult like Islam, why are you expecting them to be nice? Especially you are debating kids. You know those people are speaker corners. They are not people of, the, of education. Like uh, uh, David Wood, he is used to speak with someone like Shabir Ali. Shabir Ali is a smart. He don't do those stupid things, you know. But he is a smart, and he don't go that low. That like those kids. But Shabir Ali is the same. Even David Wood, when he debates Shabir Ali, he doesn't do what he needs to do with Shabir Ali. You see, you have to you have to move your standard up and down, depending on you are talking to who. Today I spoke as an example. Today, when I when this guy Adam he called me, how I spoke to him, I was extremely friendly with him, right? I speak to the person depending on who's he, how he talked to me. You speak to me with respect, I will treat you with respect. You start playing games, I will get you busted. No, nobody will. You know, there is there is security there and etc. And aggressive, what aggressive mean? Aggressive does not mean you have to call names to their prophet. Aggressive, he can just get him busted. As an example, uh, this guy, he said, uh, uh, Elijah uh, is God with us. Why you don't say, are you stupid or what? Who told you that? When he said that uh, Allah, he prayed, why you did not, I mean, get him busted in the spot. This is what the debate is about. This guy, hijab, he gave him a golden opportunity to destroy him in the stage. I never found a stupid answers, priceless answers to destroy Islam equal to the, to, to, to the, to the answers of this guy, hijab.
So it was a priceless opportunity for David Wood to destroy him, to make him shish kebab. What happened? He did not do it. You know what I mean? Why? Aren't you there for that purpose? You are there for that purpose. So you should do it. You are not there for any other purpose. Right? It doesn't matter, my friend. Okay, if you know that the audience is 99%, and because of that, you will not be able to say your mind. So why you go there? Are you getting my point? If they are 99999% and they might kill you and you will not be able to speak the truth So you should not do it this way. You should do it in a different way. You should do it. Okay. You call me in the phone Correct Guys are you getting my point? I agree. I'm not going to go to Saudi Arabia and say to them your prophet is being here Shish kebab That would be stupid of me, right? So as long as I know I cannot make my debate come to be a debate there why I want to go there I should do it where I can speak freely and say what I need to say otherwise I'm giving them advantage over me what the point right <clears throat> they are rude i don't blame them they are muslims why well, they will not be you know they hate him for sure the guy he is he speak against islam so what do you expect love and be kind and etc they have a lot of hate for him already even uh, i i've been told that when before them they go inside david would he try to shake hands with the, this guy the kid hijab he refused to shake hand with him so why david would he proceed why he proceed in this debate if this guy is not even willing to shake hands with you so what this point of this debate you know uh, anyway I, I don't care really I mean you know th uh, this guy he did his part that, that, you know this is his business but for us as a Christians this debate was a very good debate not because David Wood he did good job but because hijab he did the misery answers but the problem is Christians don't really share the videos we did if we go right now and see the debate between hijab and David Wood how many people they view it in hijab web page you will find 200 something 200,000 if you go and see the video I made to get hijab busted it will find 600 why you tell me why you know what I mean why the answer is very simple the Muslim they sponsor their religion the others they just watch you have to beg them can you share the video can you download the video can you take it there can you post it there you know a Muslim right away he go and he find a Muslim defending Islam right away he give him a like he gives subscribe it doesn't matter who is he a Muslim he says something everybody clap it doesn't matter how stupid it is in our side we as a Christians not only the Christian don't support us we fight with the Christians because a the Christian they will accuse you oh you're not teaching the teaching of Jesus how many of you witness Christians calling me and says why you are talking like this oh where is the love of Jesus this is not a love of Jesus what love Jesus is it about giving hugs they try to embarrass you and make you believe that you or to make other believe that you are not being good a Christian you are the bad person why you are speaking like this about Islam So in their side, if you defend Islam, you are a hero. In our side, if you fight Islam, you are a bad person. You know what I mean? I will give you an ex example about Christians, how they act. I don't know if I tell you this story before. Maybe many of you heard it before. 
I'm a person who is since I am really young very young I used to carry a gun with me it's a hobby I like guns we go hiking a group of Christians you know we go in the mountains and I take my gun with me each time I carry my guns the Christians who they are my friends they make fun of me why you carry your gun with you I mean what's wrong why I mean guys you will you will look at their eyes they look at me as I'm, I'm the devil I just because I carry a gun with me I never did anything wrong I never hurt anyone just because you carry a gun they look at you down like what, what are you doing how you got a Christian they forgot that Jesus said to Peter and he said to his disciples the one who don't have a sword go and buy one one day we were walking in the darkness it was a storm weather rain and then we start he hearing the, the the voice of the beast you know the, the wolves the hyena ooh, and, you know and they got terrified suddenly the one who carried the gun he became a hero suddenly all of them they are around me you have your gun with you right is your gun with you right please your, your, your gun with you where's your gun I was humiliated every day for carrying my gun with me suddenly all of them they, they want my gun I was the bad person always because I have a gun with me just because I am carrying a gun I did not shoot anyone I did not kill anyone I did not commit a crime now when they needed the protection Hey, everybody is behind me and then I said to them just I'm making fun of them you know it was like a, a, a priceless a priceless moment for me I said yeah I have my gun but I have only one bullet this is one of them he said to me what you carry a gun you have one bullet what are you talking about one bullet only why one bullet one bullet suddenly he's 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 questioning my my thinking why I have only one bullet <laughs> uh, we have a Muslim here saying uh, hi hill prince a human can kill the god nobody can kill god my friend and the proof that jesus christ is in islam right now is alive isn't it you muslim believe that jesus is now in heaven this is how stupid what you just said now you need to answer yourself how come a human they could not kill jesus according to your religion you see i'm going by your logic if jesus is just a human how come the jews and the roman they could not kill jesus Look now, the Abdul, he will start moving. He will stop moving and he will play dead. Can a human kill God? Well, Christians don't believe that anyone can kill God. Our God is always alive. Are you there, Abdul? You see, Abdul, my Skype is off, but if you want to call me, I will open my Skype. Can we have a deal? I am being tempted now, Abdul. Abdul, do you want to call me? Hello? Hello? Yes, I read the live chat, but not always. I try to avoid looking at the screen sometime because my eyes hurt. I'm, I'm in the internet for a long, long time, many hours. What happened to the Abdul? He's dead now. He's not moving. Somebody called the ambulance. Camel urine drink, please. Hello? Hello? Oh, the one who called African, uh, is that the one? The one who called African, uh, he, he called me African donkey? This is the Ali Dawa? Uh, okay. I will take a look, see, compare between their voices for fun. Uh, any Muslim want to call me? You see, my Skype is not open, but I will open it just for you, because we are here for the customer service hmm? who is a muslim wanna call me thank you guys for those who say i get a bless you i i apologize if i don't answer every one of you you know it's not easy but if we have any muslim here would like to call us i will be happy to open my skype any muslim would like to do so uh, by the way muslims right now i'm very tired so it's your golden opportunity my eyes is almost closing. My voice is really tired. I am here for a long time. So this is your best opportunity. You can take me down easy. This is the best time to debate me. Who want to do it? 
Anyone? Anyone want to take advantage of my weakness now? Hello? Hello? Humble man, you are an ex-Muslim. Good for you. Thank you guys for the donation. I appreciate that. Where, what happened? Where is the Muslims? There we go. I mean, what we can do? We try. Hassan, are you a Muslim? Mr. Ali Hassan, are you a Muslim? Call me, Mr. Ali. You want to call me? I will open Skype for you. I am not scary, my friend. All the Muslims, they say Christian prince, you know nothing. Ask any Muslim. <laughs> so why they are scared? <laughs> I know nothing. I don't even know how to read good Arabic. You see the funny, they say to David Wood, you do not know Arabic. They they say a Christian prince, you don't have good English. I mean, what? I, I don't know what to do. What is the solution now? Jesus in Islam, there is no Jesus in Islam. You see, just to, to make it short for you, Jesus in Islam is a fiction. Why? The Muslim, they say that Jesus, his name is Isa. Isa is coming from mostly from the Asos or the Asos in, in the Greek language. They say that the book of Isa is Injil. Injil is a Greek word. So the Muslims, they say that Isa was a Hebrew man from the Israelist, but yet his name is a Greek and his book have a Greek name. Do you see how stupid this statement is? Why? Because obviously Muhammad the thief, he stole the name, he took the name from people who they are around him. He do not know that Injil is not a Hebrew. He do not know that Esau is not a Hebrew. So he took the Greek name. Otherwise, you tell me how Jesus, how Yeshua, how Yeshua became Isa. How the book of Jesus, which is Hebrew, supposedly according to Islam, became a Greek book. Right? No, we are talking about the Injil, not the Bible. There's nothing it's called Bible. Bible is a is a is a word used for the book of books. You see, Bible is not a name of a book. Bible is a word we use to speak about book of books. It has many books. <clears throat> Do we have any Abdul? Hey, my friend from Pakistan. I love I, I love all Pakistani people. They are wonderful. Actually, when I went to Texas, I went to a Pakistani church. They are wonderful people. We don't have a long time with them. I, I ask, uh, you know, I answer a few of their questions, maybe like for an hour. Uh, they are very, very nice people. My friend. الأهد الجديد ليس بكلام الله نحن لا نؤمن بالله هذه ترجمة عربية والمسيحيين في الدول العربية أرغموا على استخدام هذه الكلمة نحن لا نؤمن بالله الله كذبة غير موجودة We as a Christians we don't believe in Allah If you search all the Old Testament and New Testament in the original manuscript you will not find the word Allah is exist so if you read the translation for the Arabic Bible, you will see the word Allah. That is a translation which as I don't accept at all. The same as the Muslim, when you translate the word Isa in English, they say Jesus. But if you search in the Quran in Arabic, you will never find the word Jesus. All right. Do we have any Muslim would like to call me? Any Muslim? I'm not a Coptic, so I do not know the Coptic language. You need to ask somebody he is an Egyptian. I'm not a Coptic, I have no idea. I can't answer you about that. 
But as I know that the Coptic uh, church, um, I think the names they have is the same as the Aramaic language. Yes, they pray in Coptic, but still I think they use the Aramaic words. Any Muslim like to call? Anyone? You know, I don't know who 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 is listening now, but I wanna I wanna ask you a very simple question. The Muslim they say to us, Allah is God. Okay, let us say for the sake of argument, Allah is God. But what kind what kind of God he promised me that he will give me a very uh, uh, powerful penis? I mean, you need to you need to explain things to me. What kind of God is God? Is I better watch a movie made in California, comedian movie, better than believing in this God. Let us say you want to tell me that. Uh, hello, my friend Jack from Philippines. You can convince, you can try your best to tell me about one God. His name is Allah. He sent the prophet. His name Muhammad. Blah blah blah, etc. You know, but you cannot com You know, you cannot explain to me that God will give me women who can I see through their bones. That's not only extremely big fat lie. Nobody can accept. It's stupid. It's ugly. Are you rewarding me or you are scaring the hell of me? Why I want to have a wife, she is showing me or you are showing me her bones. You know what I mean? You can give me all the speeches you want about God. Okay, God is a, Allah is amazing. Allah blah blah blah. Say so all the lies you have. But explain to me why does God he want to make me see the marrow of my, the bones of my wife or the the, the old eighty thousand women I will have in heaven. Why I need to see the marrow of their bones. That is the most stupid God ever. I better go and buy an X-ray machine. And I make all the women in the street walk through this machine so I can I, I'm going to work in the airport security So I can see women marrow bones in the machine is that heaven What kind of promise this promise is Guys are you listening to me you see a simple logic you can destroy Islam in a second. Islam is a very stupid religion. You can destroy it in two seconds. You don't even need an hour. You want to convince me that you are God? Well, what what kind of God he say this garbage? Let me explain to you what Allah is speaking about. Give me a second. <clears throat> oh boy Allah is God right obviously he is I mean it's so clear it's so clear my friend Who can deny that? That's astonishing. Okay, to make it close to your imagination about the women Allah given us in the heaven, the, the women He gave us in the heaven. This is what Allah He promised us in the heaven, my friend. Read. Oh, sorry. Look and love with me. Isn't he who said to you, I will show you the marrow of their bones? Okay, here we go. The women, we will see her bones. That is heaven? That what we will have? I mean, this is very sexy, by the way. I mean, look at this position. Look, she is wearing high heels. So do I need really somebody to debate me, to prove to me Islam to be false? Do, I, do you need even Christian prince to prove to you that Muhammad obviously is lying? How a human being, he have little brain, you know, brain of a of an of a mosquito.
can believe in such a thing by the way guys I have to take this picture off because I'm really really tempted as you know I am a single person I mean I cannot resist this look at this look at this brother or look at this one this one is even more tempting oh boy if I'm going to close my eyes I cannot look at this this is very tempting especially for a single person like me I cannot see that please please take take the picture off I mean come on or look at this one I'm not sure how many of you are men between the audience, but I'm sure you know what we feel right now. I hope that many people will not say a Christian prince trying to tempt men in his chat. That's astonishing, my friend. That's very sexy. And this is your God? This is what God he promised? That's that's beyond even imagination even those who make comedy movies in Hollywood didn't reach that point your God Allah is hilarious I hope that many of you will start having a fight with their wives and get divorced them because now you will compare between your wife beauty and the x-ray beauty and you will say, no way, this one is a lot more beautiful. So you divorce your wife because of me. It's my fault. That's, that's amazing. Look at this. Look at this one. Look at this one. If, if, oh, man. Oh, boy. That's. Oh, look at this one. Oh, we saw this one. Look at this one. This is, this is too much brother I hope I hope that I was not by mistake forcing many of you to convert to Islam after you saw the logic of Allah and the promise of Allah because it's obviously it's so amazing by the way I don't blame you if you convert to Islam now after seeing this if I put myself in your shoes I don't know what size of your shoes you have but obviously, by looking at the shoes of this woman in the x-ray, you will go crazy. Look at this. That's, that's too much. Allah must be a true God. I mean, seriously, how you can deny that Allah is a true God? Look at this. That is really astonishing. Robin, Robin, we are just kids. <laughs> All right, guys, I will, I will, I will take it off. Here we go. We go back to the hadith. It looks like the hadith is more merciful from looking at this thing. Okay, but what I will do? I mean, this is, this is reality. I mean, the prophet did not tell a lie. It must be true. And you know, if you think about it in a scientific way, the prophet here was the first one to predict the X-ray machine. X-ray machine is not made by the Western. It's made by Allah. Look at this. They are so beautiful to the point they are transparent. Brother, how many of you, your wife, she go behind your back and eat your hamburger or your steak? And then you ask, who ate my hamburger? She say, maybe the cat, she grab it. Now you can, she cannot do that. She is a transparent. You can see what is inside her belly. You see the benefit? This is this is beyond your 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 understanding. It's amazing. Now you can see all the poopoo is inside. Even if your wife she hide your credit card between her breast, still you can see it. Even it's in the back of her bra, because you see through. You will see even the number there. That's amazing, brother. Very very very. Amazing. So when I say Islam is a very stupid religion, it's very easy to destroy. I mean it. Now, let us make a challenge for those who they are watching. How many of you is going to cut this part of this video 
where we showed you the x-ray and etc and repost again who want to do that you see how easy you are not talking you are not making the video or what you need to do you you take my video you cut the part where did not start talking about this topic and you cut the video speaking about this topic and you repost it again let people see how silly how stupid this time is good idea what do you think guys isn't it a good idea because it doesn't matter really what religion people are when they see how stupid this is you see the the, the, the thing is <clears throat> we don't sometime or most of us we don't see how silly and stupid things is unless somebody make it as a comedy and this is why you notice i have the comedy uh, like they say uh, mood when i speak about islam because people they will not see how silly it is if you read for them the prophet said etc like you know they will not really notice many most of people they don't even notice what's happening there how stupid that is you have to bring it in the front of their eyes in a comedy way so they can see how stupid it is and this is why i speak in a certain way not because i'm trying to be funny but this is really stupid stupid to the point even funny doesn't fit with it but in order to explain to you what's wrong with it then we have to go there now my friend i'm not going to take any uh are you a muslim rockers are you a muslim if you are a Muslim, I will, I will, I will open my Skype. If not, I will not. Who is a Muslim? Want to call me? Is a Muslim? Okay, let me open my Skype. But I hope my, uh, you see, let me see first how much left in my mouse. I have my wireless mouse. It's almost dead. I don't want to start talking to you. And then I lose. Okay, well, I don't know. I have 10%. So maybe 10% will survive. You see how it says? Because I put it in charge for a little bit. It says now 10%. So maybe it will be good for some time. Okay, let me let me go and open Skype. You are a Christian? Well, if you are a Christian, I'm not going to open it. Okay, guys. Well, we will be we will be here tomorrow anyway. You know, there's no rush. We stay here for many hours waiting for Muslims to call us. I know, but a few of them call, very few. Uh, I hope that uh, uh, I will be able to do uh, not tomorrow. Actually, it's today. It's already one a.m. in the morning here, and you notice my voice is really getting tired, right? So, I want to say thank you for being here. Please download the video, share it around, and let us hope. That the world will understand and i hope that some of you will download the video and cut the part speaking about israel off and then repost the part where we are showing you the x-ray miracle of allah mustafa barbas you want to be a christian my friend that's why you are telling me speak to the lord he is the one who can make you christian by accepting him if you are honest in what you are saying but why you want to be Christian? Don't you want to have versions? Don't you want to have versions? Well, Allah will give you versions where you can see their, the marrow of their bones. Why you want to be Christian? Christianity, we don't have we don't have hookers. No, my friend Ali Hassan. Do you know that? When your prophet, he ate the goat, the goat spoke and said to the prophet, don't eat me. But yet the prophet, he died later from the goat. I wish, guys, I'm doing my broadcast in Arabic because Muslims will go crazy if I speak in Arabic. In Arabic, you see Christian prince in English is like 2% of a Christian prince. In Arabic, I am full power. Because this is my first language. They will go crazy. Abdul, I have a brain faster than all the processor of the Muslims in the world. If you don't believe me, call me tomorrow.
and let us see what you can come with thank you guys thank you all of you may the Lord bless you don't forget to subscribe if you are a Muslim don't forget to unsubscribe and subscribe again because that Allah will make you wipe the bad deed by the good deeds I mean I mean like you have to do with the opposite you have to uh, subscribe and then unsubscribe like spend the day doing that bad deed good deed bad deed good deed bad deed this is the most silly religion ever bad deed will be wiped out by the good deeds yeah right may the Lord bless you all and this is a Christian Prince for with you and that I see you today I hope or tomorrow Christ is Lord and Islam is silly made by a silly man promising us x-ray women I am not interested at all thank you and may the Lord bless you take care